Welcome to the webinar, Energy Efficiency Action in Asian, Japan, Tokyo, hosted by Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. This webinar is a part of the series, Think Globally, Act Locally. We have seen global commitments to actions on climate change, and this series looks at what energy efficiency actions are underway at the national and city level. Today's webinar, Energy Efficiency Actions, Energy Efficiency Actions in Asia, Japan, Tokyo, is the third webinar in the series. More than 120 participants have registered for this webinar, so welcome everybody. My name is Aristides Takiris, and I work for the Copenhagen Center on Energy Efficiency. The center has formed, uh, was formed in 2013 under an agreement between UN Environment, the Technical University of Denmark, and the Government of Denmark. The center serves as the global energy efficiency hub of sustainable energy for all and supports the objective of doubling the global rate of energy efficiency improvements by 2030. The center helps to coordinate and facilitate the implementation of sustainable energy for all work program and related energy efficiency activities globally by assisting policy change in countries and cities with knowledge, insights and technical support accelerating energy efficiency through innovation in delivery models, public-private partnership formation and project development, and raising the profile of energy efficiency by com communicating success uh, and supporting our uh, outreach. The center has an established network of collaborations, including international organizations, development banks, regional partners, national and subnational governments, and many other stakeholders. This webinar is part of the series Think Globally, Act uh, Locally, which aims to explore different levels of policy development and implementation and links between them, and investigates how high-level targets and policies get translated into local actions and vice versa, how implementations of projects and programs can spur the policy change. We plan to have at least uh, two more webinars during 2017, including this one, highlighting experience from different countries and cities. Today is our third webinar in this series and we'll talk about energy efficiency actions in Asian region, Japan, and Tokyo. I would like to briefly introduce the speakers of today's webinar. Uh, Rio has been working for Asian's energy efficiency and conservation program since 2013. Dr. Yasushiro Miki is the head of Building Environment Division of, at the National Institute for Land and Infrastructure Management, where he is engaged in researches on the technique to satisfy both environment quality and energy efficiency in the buildings, and also engaged establishment of energy conservation standards for buildings. Yuko Nishida joined the Renewable Energy Institute in May 2017 and is an urban renewal planner. Yasushi Tanaka it has been working as the expert and coordinator for the IPEC related task groups such as top tens and EMAC. From April 2017, uh, he is responsible for Sustainable Energy for All, which started at the UN initiative uh, and then is operated by NGO now for the purpose of promoting energy related SDGs under UN influence. Here is today's agenda. Uh, we will continue with questions and answers. Please. Feel free to post your questions anytime during the webinar using the question function on your GoToWebinar panel. Please indicate which speaker you would like to address your question to. I would like to draw your attention uh, that, the Copenhagen is, uh, that the Copenhagen Center is hosting various thematic webinars on a regular basis. All material on the previous webinar you can find on, on a on our knowledge management system by following this link. You'll see a shortcut to this webinar series and the recordings and presentation from this webinar will be uploaded there within a few days. That's it for me. Now I would like to give the floor to Rio. Okay, um, so good afternoon everyone. Uh, good afternoon from Jakarta. So as introduced by Mr. Aris, I'm Rio from the ASEAN Center for Energy. Um, today i like to share with you regarding matter ASEAN Energy 
efficiency and conservation and also including the energy trend in ASEAN. <clears throat> Before we uh, move into my presentation content today, I'd like to just brief you to introduce you what is the ASEAN Center is all about. So the center is established since um, 1999 by 10 Southeast Asia countries. So the center is, uh, has a function to be a center to facilitate, to initiate, and to implement the energy co cooperation in ASEAN. Back to my presentation today. Oops. You can see the table of my content. Oops. So um, this is the content of my presentation today. Uh, the first one I'd like to introduce you what is the plan under the blueprint of the RPAC 2016-2020 regarding uh, programs areas on energy cooperation in ASEAN. The second one is the strategic action plan. The third one is the ASEAN ENC target overview, including the fourth one is energy trends, energy efficiency status of ASEAN member state, and also some key findings of ASEAN EE best practices and also conclusion. Um, this is the regional energy efficiency target of ASEAN. We call it ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation, APEC 2016. Yeah, 2016-2025. Um, Under the theme, Enhancing Energy Connectivity and Market Integration in ASEAN in order to achieve energy security, accessibility, affordability, and sustainability for all. So you can see on the slide, there are, sef there are seven programs areas under this plane. The first one is ASEAN Power Grid in order to facilitate the connectivity of power grid among ASEAN member states, and also the gas pipeline connectivity under the Trans-ASEAN Gas Pipeline. The third one is in order to, to promote the clean coal technology utilization in ASEAN under the clean coal technology program areas. The four program areas under this plan is energy efficiency conservation. So this is uh, related to our webinar today on energy efficiency and conservation. So under this program, ASEAN committed to reduce 20% of energy intensity reductions by 20% in, in 2020. And other programs like renewable energy, including regional energy policy and planning and civilian nuclear energy. Uh, also, a focus of the, the plan until uh, from 2016 until 2025. <clears throat> um, for more specific on energy efficiency and conservation strategy and action plan under the plan of APEC 2016-2020, you can see on the slide there are four main key strategies areas that ASEAN would like to focus on. You can see on the left side there are. EE standard, e -E standard leveling system harmonization. The, the, the second one is EE financing mechanism and also including ESCO and Green Building Code. In ASEAN, we recognize that EE finance mechanism as the main driver in order to bring forward the energy efficiency realization in ASEAN to achieve 20% energy, 20 energy intensity reduction by 2020 as mentioned at the outside. So for your information, I'd like to brief you the overview of the ASEAN member state status on energy efficiency. This is a table from 10 ASEAN member states, including Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Lao PDR, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. You can see on, on the slide that this slide show to you that ASEAN member state, almost all the members has have recognized that energy efficiency is the most cost effective way in order to achieve, to achieve energy efficiency improvement. So all the member states you can see on the slide that have been put, have, have put uh, the energy efficiency target and also some policy in place in order to achieve some target under their policy. <coughs> this slide show to you the total final energy consumption, particularly for uh, some sectors. So according to the ASEAN Energy Outlook, a publication that has always 
published by ASEAN Center Energy, showing that the TFC of ASEAN will reach 1,046 MTOE by 2040 with increase by factor 2.4. This slide also showing that TFC by sectors, showing that industry, transport, and resident sectors represent the multitude of TFC in ASEAN. So this is a, the sectors that mostly has the larger energy consumption in ASEAN member states that we are putting a lot of uh, initiative and program as our focus in the sectors. Next. So this is a figure to you to show to you more specifically on total fund energy consumption per sectors. As mentioned before, um, industry and commercial 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 sectors has been indicated have been indicated as the largest energy consumption sectors in ASEAN. You can see on the slide that according to the data the sector will increase by a factor 2.5 times in 2040. If you see, if I can show you the, the absolute uh, amount of the energy, the, the growth of the TFC in the sectors, it is projected that this sector will grow from 407.71 M2OE in 2040 from 147.17 M2OE in 2005. So this is obviously uh, um, makes sense because uh, you may aware that ASEAN now is underway uh, under the framework what we call ASEAN Economic Communities. It's one of the driver that put uh, uh, um, put a driver to for the energy demand growth in ASEAN. Oops. And in ASEAN, we are using an uh, indicator in order to tracking and to monitor what is the energy efficiency improvement in ASEAN. For your information, primary energy consumption versus growth domestic product as our indicator so far in order to track and monitor the energy efficiency progress in ASEAN. You can see the figure on the slide from 2005 until 2020. So the TPS, um, you can see on the uh, on, the, on the orange line and blue line, the trend, the growth trend of the TPS and the GDP. But from the figure, you can, you can assume that um, the TPS will be a bit growing steady compared to the GDP uh, from 2005 until 2020. And for energy intensity trend in ASEAN, you can see here, uh, under, I mean, uh, uh, we always publish a out energy outlook in ASEAN. So we are using three scenarios, as you can see on the slide. The first one is the business as usual scenario, the MS target scenario, and also the MS progressive scenario. From the baseline, you can see, uh, uh, particularly for the business as usual scenario, that by 2020, ASEAN is projected to achieve the target of 20% energy intensity reduction. You can see here, uh, which is shown that uh, by 2020, ASEAN can achieve a energy, energy, intensity, energy intensity reduction by 25% based on 2005 level. And this is a overview of the status of e legalization framework in ASEAN. As I mentioned before, that almost ASEAN member states have, have recognized and, and, the, and some of them had put already uh, the e legislation framework and some under some are still underway uh, on the legislation process for energy efficiency. And this is some uh, specific measure on energy, energy management policy in ASEAN. You can see from the uh, parameter of target energy, designated energy user, periodical reporting, certified energy manager, and also certified energy auditor. Some of the ASEAN member state has uh, have put, uh, put these uh, measures as mandatory, as mandatory policy and some still under voluntary basis. 
And this is uh, for energy efficiency standard and labeling system. So uh, you see the, the diverse development of ASEAN on uh, enforce, enforcing the e-standard labeling systems. As this is as uh, in ASEAN, we recognize these uh, measures as the best measures of for uh, the government to intervene the market transformation into more efficiency in markets. So you can see uh, most of the ASEAN now is very seriously uh, to put the standard labeling system into man mandatory uh, mandatory basis. Now this is to show to you what is the minimum energy performance standard for home appliances, particularly for air conditioners, AC. You can see this is the stringency from 10 ASEAN member states in terms of their setting up a minimum energy performance standard. But in ASEAN, we have com came up with a, a common energy efficiency minimum requirements uh, for EER for 2.9 for air conditioners. Hopefully by 2020, we can harmonize the standards to come up with the uh, set, setting target 2.9 energy efficiency performance standard. And this is the energy finance finance mechanism. As I mentioned, this is, uh, has, has been recognized by ASEAN as the one more important uh, uh, more uh, driver in order to bring the realization of energy efficiency improvement in ASEAN. And ASEAN also looking at the building codes in order to uh, promote the greater utilization of uh, green building combination between energy efficiency and also renewable energy. So this is the status of green building codes of 10 ASEAN member states. And moving forward, ASEAN Center will keep continuing as the uh, center, as the facilitator and implementer of the energy cooperation in ASEAN. We will work further on surplus side and also demand side. So as the regional platform, we will continue to draw the regional activities. First one, we would like to establish policy formulation and institutional framework to overcome common barriers to promote energy efficiency strategies. The second was, we are going to decoupling between gross, gross domestic product, GDP, and also primary energy consumption, especially in developed economies in ASEAN. And we also to, would like to bring forward the establishment of mutual recognition agreement on energy performance standard for home appliances in ASEAN. And I know that all the things we'll be imp implementing in order to enhance the energy connectivity and market integration in ASEAN. So that's all my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay, um, I'm Yuko Nishida. Um, from the Renewable Energy Institute. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm really happy uh, to talk on uh, Tokyo's policy and programs. As I have been engaged in, in Tokyo Metropolitan Government for almost 18 years, although I have just left Tokyo Metropolitan Government last March. So many thanks for Copenhagen Center and particularly uh, Ksenia and Aris. Okay, so first let me show you a big picture. Um, Tokyo set the GHG reduction target first three in 2006. It is 25 reduction by 2020. And now we have also energy cost consumption target as 38 reduction by 2030. So to achieve this target, we focus building sector because Tokyo is the city of buildings. Our uh, emissions are really uh, occupied by the building sector. This slide shows the Tokyo's policy for the building sector. And uh, while the cap and trade here, can you see here, um, is, <clears throat> is serving for large facilities, the, the building scale larger and smaller is shown here. And planning uh, stage, can, you can see here. So cap and trade program uh, uh, serving for the large buildings and, and its existing buildings. And, <clears throat> and the carbon reduction reporting for smaller 
and uh, medium-sized entities are here and are broadly covers smaller facilities. And uh, Tokyo Green Building programs are serving for new building uh, new buildings when they uh, build. So, so these new buildings programs and existing building programs programs are really tied together. For existing buildings, uh, carbon reduction reporting was launched initially in 2002 for large facilities, and it developed to the cap and trade in 2010. And instead, uh, carbon reduction reporting programs were introduced to the smaller entities. And for new uh, buildings, the Green Building Program has also introduced in 2002 and developed uh, to here, but the uh, target buildings has really expanded since uh, 2010, uh, 2002. So initially it was targeting only 10,000 square, uh, square meters or more, but now it covers 5,000 square meters or more. So, and, and labeling programs and district plan has been attached uh, in this program. Actually, I'd like to explain this Tokyo Capente program and carbon reduction uh, reporting for smaller buildings and for new buildings programs today. So, let, first let me introduce Ka Tokyo Capente program. Uh, the feature of Tokyo's cap and trade program explained in these points, unlike other cap and trade, um, such as UETS or EG, uh, Tokyo's program uh, targets building sector. I mean, um, it covers existing buildings' total energy consumption, including en electricity use. So TMG, uh, I mean the Tokyo Metropolitan Government set the mandatory deduction target for each building and in the five years time, each building is required to reduce the emission. For compliance, each building can use emission trading scheme if they want to do. About the cap, uh, which is I think the crucial factor for the cap and trade scheme, it is set to meet Tokyo's city-wide carbon reduction plan and set a 6% reduction from the base year emissions for the first five years period, which is still uh, 2014. Now we are in the second period and the cap is 15% total by uh, 2019. Uh, about 1,300 facilities are facilities or cover, uh, buildings are covered by the cap and trade, and their total emissions accounts for about 20% of entire Tokyo's emissions. That's why this program is very, very um, uh, reliable, effective. Uh, based on these numbers, uh, for example, office buildings. Uh, they are required to reduce emissions by 8% in the first period and 70% in the second period. Emission trading scheme is prepared for the building owners to achieve mandatory emission reduction targets. I can say that because of this trading scheme, TFZ can set the ambitious emission reduction requirement to building owners. So this graph shows the total CO2 emission reductions of covered buildings. As you can see, already 26% reductions compared with the base year emissions has done. Actually, I have to admit, because of the Fukushima disaster in 2011, the reduction has accelerated, but still the efforts by the building owners and users has been significant. Uh, this is uh, the, the comparison with the national trend. Uh, this is a national trend uh, and uh, the, cap and the reductions or uh, emission, uh, energy, uh, CO2 emissions from the 
Kabat facilities uh, such law, such law means uh, they reduced much than the national level. So one thing I can say, for example, that uh, here, uh, LED installation in cap and tray covered buildings uh, after introduction of the program, you can see the significant uh, shift to the LED light from the usual or even the efficient fluorescent lights. So I, uh, I'd like to move on to the, the next program, Carbon Reduction Reporting for Small and Medium uh, Entities. So Reduction reporting for small and medium-sized entities, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we implemented reporting, uh, this one, reporting program, this one from 2010. And participants are really growing. Uh, this is a participants, uh, the number of the companies who report, and this is a number of the, the buildings who report. So that, that is now um, over to 2,000 companies and over 30,000 facilities. So even though the mandatory uh, scheme, they, they own, uh, the number is only this one, but uh, the, uh, you can see the voluntary scheme is really popular now. So uh, the, we are always saying that the, this program is not just collecting reports, uh, but the communications uh, between participants and the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government is the key. Uh, so based on the collecting data, uh, the the buildings are really collecting data and submit the report, and the Tokyo Metropolitan Government feeding back uh, with the benchmarking effort uh, information or other relevant informations. So that is really uh, relevant for them for the energy efficiency actions. And. Um, this uh, this is uh, this is uh, the uh, feeding part of the feeding back, and and we are uh, talking uh, saying this is as a low carbon benchmark. So the reported data is accumulated, and and now we can uh, we have the the number of the uh, building types. Uh, benchmarking information so people can see the, the benchmarking uh, to see the, 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 the performance of their buildings. And another important uh, point is to show the, the basic measures to the building facility managers or owners uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government chose 255 types of measures and explained uh, by textbooks or other uh, tools and, and they have to, so building owners has to check if they are uh, introduced, they have introduced such measures in their buildings or not. So this is a good way to raise awareness on how on uh, law or uh, no cost measures in their buildings. And this is the total emission, CO2 emissions from the covered facilities. In the year uh, 2014, emissions are total 3.8 million and 12% and reductions has made since uh, 2010. So final program I'd like to explain is the Tokyo Green Building Program for new buildings. In, in Tokyo, uh, buildings with 5,000 square meters or larger 
must submit their sustainable design report when they are planned to build. Four categories, 12 items in this table are assessed and new buildings plan is rated in each category and disclosed on the TMZ website. So this program is now uh, with a certification program uh, like this and, and labeling program like this and, and uh, utilized uh, for, especially for the plan development uh, widely. So in the end, I'd like to mention the success factors for these programs. Actually, um, Tokyo launched another comprehensive program for the building sector, but uh, which I explained in three programs. I, I think new and existing programs are very effectively working together, although it's really tough when we launched uh, various programs, uh, but, but it really worked. Another thing is, of course, cap and trade is greatly works, but in order to introduce cap and trade program, it was necessary to get stakeholders involved in, and also we definitely have get the uh, uh, data from them. So for this meaning, it was crucial to executed reporting program beforehand the cap and debt program. For, and the, finally, uh, I can say that for building energy efficiency to make the top management in the buildings aware of their own building energy efficiency status and improvement measure is really, really important. So, um, many measures on energy efficiency can be paybacked. So to get involved business talk and let them invest is the key. Okay, um, that's all I want to talk. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Yasuhiro Miki uh, of National Institute of Land and Infrastructure Management. Uh, today I'd like to make a presentation about success story of energy efficiency policy development in Japan. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, first of all, I'll talk about the present situation of Japanese energy efficiency standards. Next, I will show you the, the detail of the energy efficiency standard revised in 2013 and explain a web-based simulation tool we developed for the standards. Uh, the first topic is a brief overview of building energy efficiency standards in Japan. Also, Japan's GDP has increased 2.5-fold since the oil crisis. Energy consumption by the industrial sector has dropped by nearly 20%. On the other hand, energy consumption by the civilian sectors has increased uh, considerably, 2.9-fold uh, for the commercial sector, 2.0-fold for the residential sector. Based on the energy consumption status, CO2 emissions from civilian sector, commercial and residential buildings are required to be reduced by 40% by 2030 compared to 2013. And it is necessary to think strategically about energy efficiency measures for buildings. As a target for the global, Japan's strategic energy plan showed that by 2030, achieving net zero energy on average for new rebuilt buildings. And therefore, by using the primary energy consumption set in 2013 as the standard value, we are trying to raise energy efficiency under the mandatory standard and to guide further energy efficiency by certification criteria and so on. 
uh, to achieve further energy savings in buildings, and the Japanese government has decided that compliance with the standard will be mandatory for all newly building, built commercial buildings and housings until 2020. As a first step toward mandatory compliance with the standard, the Japanese government has revised the building energy efficiency standard in 2013. In July 2015, Japanese government has prom uh, promulgated a new act, the Act on the Improvement of Energy Consumption Performance of Buildings. This act consists of two measures. One is adv advisory measures, which was prom promulgated in April 2000, uh, 2016. Another is regulatory measures, which will be promulgated in April 2017. The main purpose of the Act is the realization of mandatory compliance with the standards. In Article 11 on the Act, a mandatory compliance with standard is defined. And when construction and client attempts to undertake specified construction, the specified building limited to non-residential portion must comply with the building energy efficiency standards. The specified buildings are determined as the building whose floor area is more than 22,000 square meters. Uh, this slide shows a present status. Uh, from April 2017, compliance with the standards is mandatory for large-scale non-residential buildings. And this slide shows scheme for evaluation of energy conservation compliance and building certification or inspection from April 2017. Before construction clients en engaging in specified construction, they must submit a building energy consumption performance att attainment plan to the administrative authorities with jur jurisdiction and undergo an evaluation of compliance with energy efficiency standards. The construction client must submit the compliance evaluation notice to, to the district construction sub surveyor. District construction and district construction surveyor also conducts a final inspection before use of the building. And this is certification standard in Article 29 on Act. When carrying out new construction and renovation for energy conservation, a certification of compliance with guideline that exceeds the level, the level of energy efficiency standard, uh, BEI is you know, 0.8 or less, may be received. Uh, this is labeling system in Article 7 on Act. It is called BELS, a building energy efficiency system. It emphasizes energy efficiency performance at or above level of standards. Uh, from this slide, I, I will show you the detail of the energy efficiency standard revised in 2013 and explain a web-based simulation tool we developed for the standards. Uh, this slide shows the calculation methodologies. Uh, we have developed a new, developed a new methodology, methodologies for evaluating the primary energy consumption of building equipment. And because the methodologies are expected to be suitable for the mandatory standards, the methodologies should be easy to understand evaluation results, easy to understand evaluation logic, simplified and streamlined, a fair reliable and transparent evaluation logic, uh, because we should consider not only evaluation process, but also review process. The methodologies should be streamlined and efficient evaluation and review. Uh, we provide evaluation assistant tools, web-based simulation tools, defined and, and 
unified evaluation rules. Some result regardless of who makes data entries. The same, the same result regardless of who performance full performance are review. We have developed methodologies for evaluating the primary energy consumption according to these philosophies. Uh, these, uh, these are the types of equipment that cons constitute primary energy consumption uh, amount in, in the energy efficiency standard. And this figure shows calculation flow of primary energy consumption. You will calculate the primary energy consumption of all equipment from the specification of the equipment and finally sum up the energy of all equipment and get the desired designed energy consumption and compare the reference energy consumption and the designed energy consumption under the same condition like this. And BEI, and BEI a building energy index, uh, means the design, uh, the ratio of design consumption to reference consumption is calculated for evaluation of energy uh, efficiency. Uh, this is an example of assumptions for room types in office buildings and hotel uh, for the standard. Uh, this is an example of standardized room use condition for office buildings. Uh, we determine, for example, uh, operation time for air conditioning, uh, internal heat gain from lighting, occupancy, and OA equipment, and so on. We set the schedule of weekday and Saturday and Sunday and national holidays like this. The information in this table is based on the results of a review in the MRIT building called Development Promotion Project. Uh, in order to estimate the primate energy consumption accur accurately, um, um, Building Research Institute measured the actual performance of the building equipment, equipment in several buildings and develop, developed a method to estimate actual performance from the manufacturer catalog data. Uh, this slide shows the information disclosed by uh, NIRIM and BRI. And we have published a, a series of calculation guides. 1,000 pages for each. You can find the details of calculation methodologies and this background. And our website provides technical information on the energy efficiency standards. I explained the methodology of calculation of primary energy consumption, but it is too complex and difficult for designer to calculate the primary, primary consumption. So we provide web-based simulation tool to assist the, the designers. This figure shows the evaluation flow of building energy consumption when using our tool. First of all, download the Excel file, which is a format for inputting the specification of equipment for the energy calculation. If you download the Excel file, input the product specification of the building equipment to the file and convert CSV file. Upload the CSV file, so automatically calculates the primary energy consumption in the cloud computing platform and gets the calculation result as a PDF file with in a few seconds. Um, as an alternative simple evaluation method, the model building method is also developed. And shapes and room uses uh, uses are uh, uses are uh, considered for each model building use. A primary energy consumption is calculated and evaluated by applying applying a typical uh, typical specification for the building enveloped enveloped and the equipment require, requiring calculation to the model buildings. In order to verify the accuracy, accuracy of the developed calculation method, we applied the calculation method to five actual buildings located in Tokyo, Japan, 
this figure shows the comparison result. Though the difference of the restaurant energy consumption is bigger, we consider that the development calculation, level of the calculation method can estimate the annual primary energy consumption of the building with a certain degree of accuracy. Because the actual use of conditions are quite different from the standardized user conditions assumed in the standard. Uh, this is summary of my presentation. The building energy standard was revised in 2013 and primary energy consumption is needed as criterion index in addition to envelope performance. The Japanese government has decided that compliance with the standard will be mandatory for all newly built commercial buildings and housings until 2020. So, uh, NIRIM and BRI have developed the online calculation tool for the new energy standards. And that's, uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, um, good morning and good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Tanaka, I'm working for ECCJ. Uh, I, I'd like to continue uh, the outside of the discussion uh, for, from uh, ECCJ uh, side. So all, uh, today's theme, theme is like this. Uh, first of all, I need to mention about uh, 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 today's subject. Even though my presentation is named on the title of this webinar as Facilitating Energy Efficiency Uptake, uh, we would like to focus rather on the following points. Uh, there are two uh, uh, big uh, uh, items and uh, uh, within a first item. Uh, number one is uh, what kind of EEMC target the commercial sector should reach in connection with the Japan's long-term energy demand and supply outlook in connection with Japan's IMDC. Uh, second, uh, for reaching the above target, what kind of measures to be taken? And the second uh, major item is a brief introduction of uh, uh, upcoming workshop in Japan. Okay, this slide shows uh, tasks and the countermeasures. Uh, uh, roughly speaking, uh, the tasks, task of the commercial sector in terms of EENC target in the long run is uh, uh, 20%, sorry, uh, 20% uh, a reduction of the energy in intensity, which will be discussed later. And uh, countermeasures, uh, main me measures are promotion, promotion of the benchmark system and the dissemination of the business operator classification assessment system and so forth. Okay, this slide shows Japan's target of, of uh, energy efficiency and conservation in 2030. Last year, METI established a long-term energy supply and demand outlook based upon the result of the study. It was found that to balance the future energy position, more 50.3 million kiloliters or the equivalent of energy reduction is necessary to meet Japan's INDC uh, intended nationally determined contributions, i.e. 26% GHG reduction in, compa in comparison with the 2013. Uh, the reduction target of 50.3 million kiloliters before 2030 means 13, 13% reduction from BAU, business as usual case, which includes uh, our GDP growth of 1.7% per year. To reach the target, uh, we should realize 35% uh, improvement in energy efficiency in 2030. When we look at the commercial sector uh, specifically, a target number is as follows. Uh, first, energy consumption target uh, is 13.8% uh, reduction uh, from, the, uh, from the year of 2013. On the other hand, estimated change of the floor square foot is uh, 6.8% increase from the uh, same year. So therefore, the conclusion is our reduction target is 
uh, almost like a 20% uh, from the year of 2013. As we said, uh, Japan should attain 35% further improvement of energy efficiency in some 20 years until 2030. As you can see on this slide, uh, we attained nearly 40% of energy efficiency improvement during 1970 and 2010. Judging from the conditions, uh, we need to attain the same level of ENC improvement as we attained in the past 40 years after oil crisis in almost half period of time. Uh, this slide shows goals and uh, measures to realize it in each sector. Uh, Japan should attain the target of 50.3 million kiloliters of energy conservation by piling up the energy conservation measures in each sector, as sh uh, shown in this slide. Uh, commercial sector's obligation, i.e. 12.3 million kiloliters, uh, which is uh, almost equivalent to the quarter of the total 50.3 million kiloliters, is composed of the following measures, three measures. Uh, number one is energy efficient building, realization of the energy efficient buildings. New buildings are obliged to comply with the energy conservation standards from uh, 2017 uh, fiscal year, uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Miki uh, presented. And on top of it, introduction of a new technique like uh, ZEB, zero energy building, to be promoted. Uh, secondary, Mieruka, uh, which is a, a visualization process. Uh, and energy management by BEMS, a building energy management system. And the uh, introduction target is a half of the building as in, num uh, in number. And the third one is the introduction of high efficiency facilities to various sectors, like a very uh, uh, progressed uh, technique uh, in the area of lighting, air conditioner, a water heater, transformer, refrigerator, freezer, and so forth. And uh, uh, regulation of factory and office under the Act is shown in this slide, uh, like, like in the flow of works. Business operators annually consuming 1,500 kiloliters or more of energy are obliged to submit an annual periodical report. Based on the periodical report, uh, they give guidance, that means uh, uh, government give guidance and so forth from a viewpoint of energy conservation to the business operators having a problem in the process of rational use of energy. As a whole, they are trying to control business operator by three elements. One, energy conservation guidelines, which is stipulated in the Act. Matters to be observed by business operators in relation to the management system and the management methods of individual equipment are stipulated by energy conservation guidelines, uh, which is stipulated in the public notice. And the second, uh, target to utmost efforts, which is uh, uh, to, fu to fulfill the target, uh, i.e. reduction of annual average of energy unit consumption by at least 1% versus previous year is necessary. And the thirdly, a benchmark system. This was introduced for further strengthening the move on top of setting the target of utmost efforts. The intention is by showing the target to be aimed at, which is a performance only achieved by high-ranking business operators in the industry. Everybody can see their own position in the industry by themselves. Together with the benchmark system, business operator classification assessment system has been introduced to promote the implementation of the, of the act more objectively by visualizing the whole situation where business operators are striving. A benchmark system uh, was originally established as a kind of top runner system for the industry. In the commercial sector, energy consumption continued to grow due to an increased total floor area, but picked out in 2004 and started decreasing as a trend thereafter. Especially in recent years, there were conditions that helped reduce energy consumption unintentionally, such as stagnant economy, a big shock of great counter earthquake, 
uh, low temperature, uh, dissemination of LED lights, and so forth. Concerning the above situation, to help motivate business operators in the commercial sector to get better energy intensity, it was decided to expand the coverage of the benchmark system to the commercial sector. And this slide shows the expansion and the process of expansion of application of the benchmark system in the commercial sector. The first expansion of application to major industries and some of the commercial sector realized a coverage rate of 65%. And the second expansion to schools and the hospitals and so forth is supposed to increase it up to 75%. We are going to expand its uh, application up to 70% coverage as soon as possible. Uh, this slide shows overview of the business operator as, uh, as classification assessment system. Uh, this system classifies all the business operators who submit the period periodical report stipulated by the Act into four classes of S, A, B, and C to take uh, explicit responses according to the classes. The government may public and place the business operators with superior energy conservation in each industry and examine those with inactive energy conservation in a strict manner. The business operator can promote himself uh, with others to understand his own position. The system started from uh, 2016 fiscal year. Uh, summary is, we talked about the three things today. Act on the rational use of energy. Uh, the Act is taking the lead in letting business operators improve the energy intention by the regulatory scheme of the Act. Second, on top of the target of 1% reduction of the energy intensity every year, benchmark system had been set in several industries and is being set in the commercial sector as well. Furthermore, business operator classification assessment system was introduced in 2016 to give business motivation to reach the target. Then uh, I will move to the uh, uh, second subject, which is a brief introduction of ECCJ's IECAP workshop uh, this year. Uh, this slide shows two different schemes at the background of ECAP uh, 14 workshop to be held in coming November. ECAP stands for Energy Conservation Workshop and uh, AGIP, ASEAN Japan Energy Efficiency Partnership Program. ECAP 4, 7, and 9 were held focusing on building energy efficiency and the refinement of uh, AEA, which is the ASEAN Energy Award System, in various points. This time we are going to put together the workshop result of ECAP and the CIFO to make a certain progress. Bearing, th bearing those in mind, pillars of the ECAP 14 are as follows. One, follow up of the last year's workshop. Uh, two, uh, tackling with ASEAN's traditional theme. And three, new technology, especially recent uh, development of the ZEB technology. Okay, at the final slide, you can see more detail about the uh, aim of ECAP 14, which you can see later. Uh, and then, if you uh, have a uh, uh, big interest of this uh, uh, ECAP 14, please let me know later. Uh, I'll talk about this one, uh, respectively, with you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. This is uh, the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the panelists, now it's time for our Q&A session. Uh, we received a few questions from the attendees. Mm. So we'll start uh, first with, uh, uh, with Rio. Rio, the first question for you is yes. like, uh, what drives the more than double increase in energy consumption in the transport sector? Um, yeah, thank you, Alice. Yeah, I just want to briefly uh, answer, I mean, yeah, transport sector, and as, as I indicated uh, in my presentation before, it's also one of the largest energy consumption sectors um, in ASEAN. So um, if you see the situation in ASEAN that actually uh, on energy efficiency, we have not put so much energy efficiency collaboration and cooperation in ASEAN, focusing on transportation. But according to the, our uh, uh, ASEAN energy outlook that uh, these sectors need to be um, uh, put some mass focus because uh, um, seeing that a uh, huge uh, energy efficiency saving potentials. So 
some drive uh, uh, drive that uh, transportation making a uh, doable energy consumption in ASEAN. You see that in ASEAN we have we have near the economy economy fuel economy uh, system and also uh, the lack of uh, 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 a proper uh, public transportation in ASEAN. So I think a um, uh, few things that I mentioned before. So some of the drivers that make this transportation as a uh, large energy consumption and will be double uh, uh, trend in, in the future. Nassim. Thank you, Rio. We have another question for you. And the question is, what are the challenges to improve the energy efficiency in Asian region? Yeah, as I mentioned that actually we are um, a lot of challenging in Paris, of course, in order to make uh, the real the realization of the energy system improvement in ASEAN, in particular for the regulation and the policy infrastructures. Uh, as I mentioned before on my presentation, not all ASEAN member states have put together uh, uh, the, uh, the legislation framework for energy efficiency. So this is a challenge for us in order to narrowing the gap among ASEAN member states in, uh, in terms of energy efficiency uh, legislation framework as a foundation to bring forward energy efficiency uh, 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 improvement in ASEAN. So this is a fun, uh, very fundamental challenging in ASEAN in terms of uh, ENC policy mission. And also uh, about the human development and, and also um, um, uh, technology uh, transfer in ASEAN. I think those uh, things as the key uh, challenges in ASEAN that we need to more focus to address in order to bring forward the energy efficiency in ASEAN. Aris. Thank you very much, Rio. Uh, the next question is for Yuko. So, uh, Yuko, the question is, uh, would like to know if electrical distribution system loss in building is considered as one component of rating green building? You mean in the green building program? Uh, apparently, yes. Yeah, uh, because in, in our program, we are cons assessing the, the uh, energy efficiency that that really uh, includes uh, uh, electricity uh, consumption. So based on the the Ministry of a uh, national level uh, standard. So that's that's only shows uh, the the performance. Uh, of the energy efficiency, but it's not necessarily shows uh, the, uh, the how to choose the, the electricity system. Am I? Okay. Thank you very uh, much. We, <laughs> please. Yeah. Uh, we have another question uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, for you, Yuko. Uh, the question is, how did you manage to have a significant major share of voluntary schemes implemented, reported? Uh, you mean the, how we can um, improve or the, to, to get them uh, involved in the, the reporting program? Apparently, yes. Yeah. So, uh, um, Definitely, especially for mandatory program, it's it's easy. Uh, but but it's it is uh, really at the same time tough thing to negotiate or to uh, talk with the stakeholders to set such a mandatory uh, system. But actually, for a voluntary system, uh, we are using a lot of. Uh, measures and tools and, and incentives to get them involved. Uh, for example, we uh, we have a really great partners such as our business group our partners or the uh, unions or such kind of groups are really helpful for for us uh, to expand the, the voluntary program. Because it is really important uh, for such groups, uh, business groups, to improve, the, to enhance the energy efficiency in their buildings. So, so that's that's a kind of the win-win uh, scheme. So we are really have uh, we have been uh, appreciate such kind of groups uh, incentives. 
And also, uh, Tokyo uh, had the, the some kind of the, the subsidy program, especially for the energy efficiency facility subsidy uh, program. That is always uh, to have liquid such kind of reporting program. That is also a, a good uh, tool for expanding the program. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Uh, our next question is for, for Mr. Tanaka. Uh, and the question is, if business owners have uh, difficulty in meeting the energy conservation standards, are there any penalties placed on them? If so, how does the government encourage the owners to make the move towards more efficiency practices? Mr. Mm. Tanaka? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, when you see the, uh, you know, that page six, uh, you can see uh, some uh, answers. Uh, okay, so uh, the first uh, approach to the uh, uh, business operators by METI is just, uh, uh, you know, uh, take a look, taking a look at the periodical report. And if if find some difficulties, uh, they, they will, uh, you know, uh, come to their uh, uh, site, uh, I don't know, uh, and they will make a judgment uh, comparing with uh, you know uh, those people or with that same uh, uh, kind of the business. And then if if, if they find uh, uh, some points, uh, they they will go to 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 see uh, what is going on at the actual uh, side of the uh, you know the company which is which does not have the uh, good performance. And then if uh, they find uh, something, they will uh, get them know about the uh, what what will be the improvement. Uh, uh, procedure or measures, and then uh, they will make uh, afterwards, if it's necessary, they will make some suggestions to those people, and then uh, uh, if they uh, can uh, make an improvement, that's fine. But uh, otherwise, uh, final, uh, uh, you know, uh, the action by the government is uh, kind of a penalty, but. Uh, uh, I don't think it will happen because you know for uh, so many years it doesn't ha it didn't happen. But anyway, all these process uh, is included in those kind of uh, a process. Is it okay? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we have another question uh, for for you, Mr. Tanaka, and the question is: Does Japanese government subsidize capex costs uh, of business for energy efficiency improvement through new technology? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, regarding the uh, subsidy system, uh, this is a very big, uh, you know, uh, item discussion. So uh, if uh, uh, you allow me to uh, come back to you with some uh, uh, detailed detail memo, uh, that will be fine because yeah, it can't be said in one, one word. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, we have another question. I think it's for Rio, but maybe it's also for all the panelists. So please free, uh, you have open microphones to intervene if you want. The question is, aside from greenhouse gas emission reductions, what are the opportunities for people, investors, and the world regarding energy efficiency program and projects? May I? Answer of course. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really uh, important aspect, and we uh, we have in Tokyo also have been really keen on how to uh, direct the investors' eyes to the energy efficiency programs. But the the we realized that the important things how to involve in involve the, the such investors in the scheme. Usually they don't know the uh, building energy efficiency and other, uh, even there are a lot of opportunities, but they don't know. So, so that, that is really important to provide the information to the investor, investors and, and especially through the, the building owners or the facility managers, we, we can, uh, we can provide the information uh, to the investors a uh, lot, and and also we uh, we have been uh, organized the the uh, 
uh, investors seminars or the newsletters or such kind of things so that that is the key so any tools we can find is uh, the 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 opportunity to improve the uh, investors uh, information uh, uh, inv investors knowledge thank you thank you very much Hugo uh, Mr. Tanaka, also we have another question for you. It's mainly it's a clarification question. And the question is, what is KL for energy measurement? Uh, is oh. it KL of oil equivalent? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, kiloliters of oil equivalent uh, yeah, amount, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for Dr. Miki. And yes. uh, the question is, why the energy consumption of the actual data of the restaurant is so big compared to the calculated data? Uh, the, yes. uh, the energy effect, uh, the, in the standards, the, uh, the, uh, the re restaurant, uh, restaurant for, for example, the, re the restaurant uh, the target and items for evaluation is limited uh, because, uh, for example, the, in, the, in the case of writing, the only base right is uh, evaluated, it can be evaluated, but the additional spot right or the other uh, uh, right, uh, not including the uh, uh, design phase. <laughs> the, so the this is the reason of the difference of the actual data, actual consumption and design consumption. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, finally, we come to the end of the webinar. I would like to, to thank all the panelists for the informative and interesting presentations and to the audience for their active participation. Uh, the presentations will be beneficial for all stakeholders involved uh, in the energy efficiency in the Asian region, uh, Japan and Tokyo, and all the, all the energy efficiency experts. Thank you for your attention and wish you a good, night or a good day or night from Copenhagen.